Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Molten Modulate. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce you today to the beautiful, the intoxicating, endless processor. It is an absolute dream of an ambient module, the sort of module that can take you off onto unexplored adventures. It's remarkable in its simplicity, so much so that when I started out I thought, is this it? Is this all it does? And I was right, this is all it does. But once you start to fold your way in there, what it does is it's just mesmerizing. I don't think I've gotten to the bottom of it yet, but I'm still I'm still falling and cascading down the many sides of this extraordinary valley of sonic I don't know. Sonic intoxication. So what's going on? Well, you can hear endless, endlessly sustaining some things that have been running through it. And that's what it does. It's infinite sustain. Infinitely. <laughs> now, Blue Catch come out of Kiev in the Ukraine. And when I first saw this module, I knew, somehow I knew deep inside my core that this was something that I was going to enjoy. So I bought one. They haven't sent it to me. They don't know I'm doing this review. I just got hold of one, instinctively, impulsively, as you do sometimes. <laughs> and what's interesting just at the moment is that I'm realising that the name Blue Catch, or Bukach, something of that nature, actually means bumblebee. And that seems very appropriate just at this particular moment. Now I'm running this through a few effects because that's something that I feel it really benefits from it pads it out it moves it about because by itself it doesn't actually have any movement at all as i say it's really simple desperately simple so simple that you wonder why they're two because it has two infinite sustained circuits within itself but again over time as it opens itself up to you, you go, ah, oh, it's because I can then, I can capture a couple of different things. I can play those against each other. It can do more than one thing. I mean, what it's doing at the moment, I, I've, I've literally just captured a few notes as I was playing, and now it's continuing to drone, and it's a droning monster. It can do this incessantly, forever. But it also gets cleverer, because you can start adjusting layers. You can start to stack things up you can replace one drone with another kind of secretly fading in and out and phasing between these different ideas and sounds with the two engines the two sides if you like you can swap between them creating completely different textures on each <laughs> it's just amazing and this was pulled from I'm using currently the Pianophonic from Nobula and the Surface from Qubit And it's from those tones that I extracted this endless, infinitely sustaining bedrock foundation of a sound. Add a few more effects. Mm -hmm. 
No, I'm not actually touching the Ender's processor at all. It's just still there holding on to those same notes that it captured a while ago. So before I get lost in another exploration of this, before I disappear down some kind of rabbit hole, just really enjoying the presence of that cinematic soundscape that's filling the space, I should bring you in and introduce you to it properly so that we can see exactly what it is that it's doing. And as I say, it's so ridiculously simple that you'll be wondering why, why, why would I want this? <laughs> it's only doing this one thing. Oh, but it's good. It's good. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> as I say, this is one of those reviews that I was a bit reticent about because I thought, oh, you know, I've bought this. I thought it was this thing. It's not really this thing. And I sort of put it to one side and play with it again, put it to one side, play with it again. And then it's like, oh, oh, hang on, hang on. And now I can't be without it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, come in, come in close. Let's go through it. And then after that, I'll try to put through a whole, you know, a, a few different ideas through it. I think ultimately is perhaps what you might want to hear because otherwise you'll think it just does the one thing. But then it does just do the one thing. It's confusing, isn't it? <laughs> right, let's make all that loveliness stop. Oh, it's such a shame. It's gone. It's gone. Right, let's try to calm this down so that we can we can properly understand what's going on so i have the deckard's voice going into the input at the top the output going to an effect and out nothing else on it a little bit of reverb i think but the idea is that you play a note you press the yellow button and it captures it so when i release it's still there now what it's doing is not sampling as such, it's resynthesizing. It's analyzing the signal that's coming in. It's doing that all the time. And then it resynthesizes that sound in kind of an infinite clickless loop of gorgeousness. So it's just go along. There you go. Job done. That's what it does. That is that's the that's the thing. That's its that's its thing. There we go. <laughs> I mean, you can already see how that's interesting because I've now got this drone from a monophonic synthesizer that I've captured that I can now play along to in a drony bagpipes kind of way. So there you go, job, job done. But there's more to it than that. It has five layers. So I can turn this little knob here, round to number two, watch for the little LED to flash, which tells me I've got to number two, stick in another note. Grab it. Now I've got that coming in. Turn around to number three. So I've now built up this bigger drone with other tones in it. It's just awesome. I can add more to that. But perhaps more interestingly, I can also replace them. So if I leave it on the same one, I'm currently on number three, I can't remember what note it was. Let's stick in a higher note. A 
then that'll come in. Now you have this fade in and fade out control here, which sort of dictates how fast the next thing comes in and how slowly the original one goes out. And if you put these down to nothing, it will just quick switch. I mean, there's a little bit of buffering going on, so it's not necessarily instant. But I find if you have this up a little bit, then it just smooths its way in. Like that, in this sumptuous, sumptuous way. And if I like, I can clear that one. Clear that one. Bring me back to our single original drone. <laughs> and that's that's it. That's it. It's amazing. It's totally totally amazing. Let me give you another quick example. Let's stick in an, an arpeggiation. Now because the notes are moving, I'm having sort of less choice over perhaps which note I'm going to grab. But I can still just hit the button. And it'll pick something. And it's there. Did you hear the way that just filled out everything? Now I can turn down the, the, the through on the input. So I can just hear what it captured. Now it didn't really capture a single tone, it seemed to capture like a section. Which is then smeared. You know, it has granular similarities, I suppose. And that is dictated by this memory knob here. If you put down a very short piece of memory, it will just grab a tiny piece and resynthesize that. If you open it up to about three seconds, I think, it will then take a larger chunk, but you're not getting a sample, you're not getting a loop of a bunch of notes. You're getting all of those notes within that three seconds sort of pulled, pulled through, extended and expanded. So let's see what that looks like. So it's now sort of captured a whole range of sounds in one layer. And if we were to make this a purer sound, then obviously what's being captured will reflect upon that. Fades out. Fades in. Oh, just, just, just how fantastic is that? Now I know you're thinking, well yeah, but I want to be able to shift that around and pitch that about, perhaps. Modulate it. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you do. Maybe you do. But there's not a whole lot you can do with that. There's no pitch changing. I can't play it or or you know pitch shift it up, not at least without some other module to do that. What you do have is control over the volume of both channels. So I could take an LFO, stick that into the volume.
happily demonstrated at that point how it's so easy to overwrite the last one because you forget to move the knob. So you have control over the level of each side. And so you have tremolo possibilities, you have you know, amplitude modulation possibilities within there and also the ability to swap between one and the other which perhaps I'll show in in another scenario in a moment but just to continue from where we are now you've also got control over when the capture happens with a gate and also which layer you're on There's lots of potential in there which again I'll show you in another scenario in a minute Let me go back to where I was when we started this, which is using the pianophonic and the surface. So I'll take the output of the pianophonic, I'll stick that into, into number one, output of the surface into number two. So now I've got two separate outputs. There's no mixing within the module itself, so I have to, to look at those separately. And so for convenience sake, I've taken the output into this wonderful Sunless City transistor cascade filter, <laughs> which is just an awesome thing that I've just acquired. So I'm enjoying very much playing with that. And I'm going to mix through there. So where is this? This is going to here. This is going to here because that has two signal inputs. So that's giving me a mono output, which I'm then sticking into uh, the data bender, which is not uh, up at the moment. So we're just going to, uh, to use that as a stage along the way. And then that is going to go into the Vino Echo. Have you got all that? Is that important? <laughs> Probably not. Are we getting anything through? Yes. So the idea here is using two different sound sources, I can grab two slightly different drones to both channels. So I've got piano going through one. And you select between the channels here on the switch. You're not using them at the same time, you're using one or the other. So I could stick something in there. Always capture exactly what you think every time. Okay, that's a bit better. That's on that side. If I go to channel two. turn down one just leave us with that high pitched surface there bring the other one back in we go up to layer two go back to channel one so I've now got a flavour of two different things going through it
<laughs> so what can you do if you can't change the pitch? Are you, are you stuck with this? Or you just replace it with something else? So it can get very sinister very quickly. But you could also load up each side with a different, uh, different set of notes, for instance. So if I go to one, come all the way around and just put in a basic chord. I could go to two and put in something else. And then the usefulness of having two channels suddenly starts to come into focus. Okay, here's a slightly overcomplicated scenario in this processor here. What I've got is a, uh, a bass line coming through the Pony VCO. Something else coming off the acronym. And what I want to do is create a sort of a, a, a background shimmer to all of that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to capture some of the notes that are going into the Pony VCO, but I'm going to do it via the Qubit surface, just because I really like the sound of that and what it gives to it. So we're not listening to the surface, I can turn that up. I just want to grab some of that into the endless processor as the background. Yeah, hopefully just by pressing the button. Let's grab some more. introduce an LFO into the volume input. To give it some rhythm.
some effects with something like Data Bender. And I could recapture. Alternatively, I could use the actual oscillator straight through. I don't know what to say other than core. Wow, core blimey. That's quite that's quite a thing. Let me just stop this a second. <laughs> I mean there's there's limitations here because once I've captured something I have to run it through other modules in order to do something with it. I can't pitch it up, pitch it down, things like that, which seem like something that you'd want to do uh, is currently not available uh, within the Blue Catch. But heck, the fact that I'm you know creating a whole other texture, creating a whole other thing uh, within my rack from what's already going on. So it's taking notes, it's taking pitches and textures that are already there and expanding them and stretching them and doing interesting things with them. It's the sort of module you could leave in your rack, run something through it and just grab something every now and again. <laughs> it could be just something, a flavour to add to a live set. It doesn't have to be the focus. It could just be something that every now and again you do and that would pull out a drone or you could start a set or end a set with it very very easily or you can build an entire patch around the idea of using this for something you can build up a chord like i kind of was really i was kind of pulling a chord out you've got up to five grabs five notes essentially that you could set up that's a little bit easier to do when i had the keyboard attached because i could then choose a note and add it to it whereas this is pulling from a sequence and that i think for me it's really, really interesting. I wanted to try plugging a microphone in quick just to see if that was interesting. <laughs> I don't really know, is it? I don't know. Let's try. Let's try that. 
So if I plug something into the instrument interface here, get a signal, one, two, one, two. Now I'm going to want to take the output out here, plug that into the endless processor, we'll go over to channel two. One, one, ha, oh, ha. Oh. That's coming through in here on the reverb. So, if you can see, see what, see this microphone, microphone. I've got to do something like, right, one, two. So let's go over here on volume two, one or two. So, I mean, la. With the, the data bender, what's interesting, it does do some pitch shifting, so that's that adds a really interesting flavor to it.
Well, there we go. There we go. Pretty clear that feeding it through you know, your favourite interesting effects processes is just a joyful thing to do. It gives it a whole other thing. Totally, totally brilliant. So in this much simpler example, I've just introduced a clock to turn the capture on and off. So the sequence is running through the endless processor. Again, this is being grabbed and it's giving it another note over the top. could of course put an LFO into the layer to move that around so it could gradually build up and build up. You need to think about your source material a little bit because it can get a bit muggy. It can start to, to not sound perhaps exactly what you were after. But modulation potential is there as well as clearing things as well. So you can, you can slowly sweep that round or place it round with voltage, grab an entire soundscape and then clear it. You can work and program this in to quite a complicated setup to pull in these ambient vibes to just 
pull and stretch on a note just out of nowhere that then becomes its own thing. There you go, the endless processor from Blue Catch, or something along those lines. It's totally fascinating, totally mesmerizing. Just keep exploring new ways to use it. How else can I pull that in there? I'm trying to, to wrangle with something that I don't fully understand, like the Pamela's Pro Workout, in order to try to feed it the right thing so I can turn it on, I can turn it off, I can start messing it about. And then I'm thinking, well, I need more effects because I want to run that through other things. And where am I going to plug that in? I can't have everything going through the same effect. And so it creates this need in you to expand and push that interesting stretched tonal palette through other other doorways and other other pathways it makes you talk like a hipster i mean it is an awesome an awesomely artistic and creative module while at the same time not really doing very much <laughs> it was you know on my first try it's not the sort of module that you get and plug in on your first try having not seen a video like what i've made and you've only just got a flavor of what it's about you plug it in and you go oh and you ponder the uselessness of your choices and uh, and why on earth you've just sent a bunch of money that way. But then, by golly, but then, it just becomes this, this work of art, this poetry, this, this song that's being sung deep within its own soul. I love putting the microphone through it. Hadn't done that before. That was interesting. That's a whole other thing. I'm suddenly thinking live performance, I could start doing that. And I've thought about that often because it's different to using a delay or using um, a tape loop or something like that where you capture and you layer on top. This is different. It has a different feel to it. I mean, it was pulling, it was recognizably human voice, but it wasn't a sample. It was a resynthesis. It was a stretching. It was a, a redoing, a looping that was not anything like exactly you would hear from anything else really really interesting got my little mind going now on how i'm going to work that in to things <laughs> and there's two channels of it two channels which i perhaps i don't know if i've shown that in enough depth in that you can have one chord here one chord here two different completely different flavors being being captured and then you can swap and fade between the two all all modulatable all controllable hmm and then with just a, a long press you can clear the whole thing and it all just falls away grab something else and it then beefs itself up I mean, I would love to be able to, to pitch shift it perhaps easier. I mean, Data Bender is a great, it's a great facility for that. And you may well have other modules that will do that kind of pitch shifting rigmarole, or you can just uh, stick it into some kind of um, tape delay or something which is going to add those sorts of vibes to it. Magneto is probably ideal for this sort of thing. And so Enders is that sort of module that just makes you start to think, oh, yeah, I could do this. I could do this. I could expand that. It, it pushes you into these creative decisions. And suddenly I want to redo my rack as I have. I mean, everything in here that I've put in here that I'm extremely happy with at the moment is because I was trying to demo the Endless, trying to get the right sort of thing. And it, it's pushed me towards creating something which has got some interesting effects, interesting tones, interesting sounds, good sequencing you know good modulation it's smartened everything up it's made me feel serious and important and maybe even an adult at all this <laughs> while at the same time pulling a childlike quality of joy out of you as you hit those notes that's a thing <laughs> that's a real thing so there we go i hope that was helpful i've thoroughly enjoyed having this module and it's you know there's no absolutely no purchase anxiety in me or regret from having uh picked one of these up this has definitely fulfilled its purpose and created a whole new role for itself within my rack 
fascinating. Just got to work out exactly how to to mix everything together. That's the, that's my next challenge, I think, because I do prefer to take this separately and then mix the other thing in separately with different effects going on. So you sort of take the tone and grab it into Endless before the tone has gone through other things and then you can affect them separately. But that's just going to require a little bit of rooting thought, contemplation, effects. I do have some effects on the way from Erica since actually. They were probably going to sit in here nicely. But also the Vino Echo was particularly effective early on, I have to say, particularly as it also has the ability to pitch modulate within itself, which gives a, a good additional effect to Endless, which is resolutely static. <laughs> I could talk about this one for hours, but I won't. I'm going to go. Hope that was nice. In the meantime, go make some tunes.